This afternoon, we begin the conversation of veteran homelessness. With us today is Jim Canelli, and he will introduce his panel members. He is a network homeless coordinator for the VA healthcare system serving Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio. The network homelessness coordinator serves as the primary contact within the network for the VA homeless programs. As network homeless coordinator, he is responsible to provide coordination and oversight for the whole vision, which is 10, number 10, and the National VHA Homelessness Justice for Justice Involved Veterans and others assigned in the mental health programs or initiatives for the network. He serves in an advisory capacity to the network director through Vision 10, chief mental health officer regarding service needs, resource allocation, proposed program development and or the enhancement of programs to meet the needs of homeless and justice involved veterans. He received his master's degree in social work from the Ohio State <clears throat> University in 1997, a bachelor of arts degree in sociology from the Ohio State University in 92. He is a recognized licensed independent social worker, supervisor of the state Ohio since 1999. Thank you, Jim. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's really happy to be here. Happy to be anywhere um, these days. So uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I've put together a, a panel of subject matter experts uh, from our VA and community partners that work with our VA homeless programs across the state of Ohio. So I really want to appreciate uh, thank them for joining us today. Two of our attendees, um, two of our presenters, will not be here. They did a audio recording. Uh, so we'll play that during the session, but we'll have their material on the screen for you. Um, we'll have uh, Reaver Nelson and Diane Waite, uh, both coming from the Cleveland VA or the Northeast Ohio Healthcare System of Ohio, as it's now referred, uh, formerly Louis Stokes Medical Center. Uh, both of them are social workers in our homeless program. Reaver Nelson is the program director for the Community Residential Care uh, Center in Cleveland. And Diane Waite is a, a coordinated entry specialist uh, serving uh, the Cleveland service area. In addition to uh, Reaver and, oh, put it up a little, is that better? Okay, in addition uh, to Diane and Reaver's presentation, uh, we will have uh, Sarah S Steepleton, uh, who is here representing Lutheran Social Services Faith Mission. Uh, she's covering for her director who was not able to attend today, Eddie Rapp. Uh, but Sarah is a SSVF outreach worker and has a bachelor's degree in social work from Ohio University and is also uh, has been working with uh, Lutheran Social Services since 2015. Yes. Okay. So we're glad to have you. Thank you. A valued partner. Uh, in addition, we have Patricia Ufferman, who is with the Columbus uh, Central Ohio Healthcare System of Ohio, formerly the, uh, well, it was Chalmers, Chalmers Wiley. P. Wiley uh, Ambulatory Care Center. Uh, at, Patricia is also a, a licensed independent social worker with a degree from Ohio State University and is the HUD VASH program supervisor, uh, program manager uh, at the Columbus VA. And we have Diane Smith Foster, Diane Smith -Foster who is uh, the homeless program coordinator for the Dayton VA Medical Center. That's the only name that Dayton has right now, is that right? Uh, Diane, as the homeless program coordinator, uh, has been in place now for two years, three years as the program coordinator. One year, one year, time flies, okay. And Diane also has a licensed independent degree in social work and uh, has been with the VA for 13 years. So I want to thank all of them. They have a lot of experience in, in the homeless arena. Um, the clicker is here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and advance these slides, but I will have everyone coming up. But the first uh, slides, um, just a quick overview. Whoops, wrong way. Somebody needs to train me on this. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right, so that's the introductory slides. You heard about our network uh, and the VA organization earlier today. Um, there are, 
a total of 18 visions across the country, and we're Vizin 10, as, as was mentioned. Um, we, uh, at Previ, when I started this, we were just Ohio. We had five medical centers in Ohio. We merged in 2016 with a network that included Indiana and Michigan. So it's a, a much bigger footprint with 11 medical centers total. This slide is just uh, providing you a little historical background for uh, homeless uh, services uh, that we are authorized to provide. Beginning in 1987 with the uh, uh, Homeless uh, Assistance Act, also known as the McKinney Vinto Homeless Assistance Act, uh, our first program was uh, funded, uh, HCMI, which is Healthcare for uh, uh, Homeless Chronically Mentally Ill Veterans. Uh, it is now Healthcare for Homeless Veterans is the new name for that program. Uh, and you can see the chronology here, a number of programs, uh, HUD-VASH program had a pilot program in 1990, um, the Grant and Per Diem program, the Veterans Justice program that you heard about earlier today, uh, SSVF, which you'll hear about in a little bit, HPAC, which is a partnership between our homeless programs and our primary care uh, medical teams, and uh, our HVCES, which is a Homeless Veterans Community Employment Service. So it's a partnership with uh, homeless and our employment programs. Uh, and then we have a call center, a uh, national call center for homeless veterans that was established um, in 2016. There are also, th uh, recently, uh, this last year, there were three pieces of legislation that greatly expanded uh, some of our authorizations. Uh, one of them is really more limited to COVID and giving us some uh, additional flexibilities due to the public, uh, the, uh, public health emergency. Uh, some of it was related to some additional funding. Uh, but we also had some legislation that offers some permanent authorizations, which allows us to provide uh, more expanded services to some veterans who weren't currently eligible for uh, health care services, uh, but they are eligible for our homeless services, as well as um, some legislation that uh, allows, uh, authorizes the VA to contract for legal services. So that's something that's new, and uh, we're waiting for uh, that to be operationalized. So more details on that to follow. Okay. And uh, I've also included in this slide deck uh, some chronology and some definitions for our acronyms. We love our acronyms. So these are, these are more just for information. I'm going to go through all of these. But a number of the, the programs that you'll hear about are listed here, uh, as well as the time frames. OK. So I'm going to now flip over to our um, first session. Uh, this is going to be presented by uh, Ms. Diane Waite and uh, her colleague, uh, Reaver Nelson. Uh, they've prepared a uh, audio recording, which we're going to play, uh, but they're going to be talking about the uh, coordinated care uh, and the VA uh, and HUD approach to providing a coordinated approach to services um, as for homeless, homeless uh, veterans, um, as well as some outreach activities that are available through the VA. The Northeast Ohio VA Healthcare System Coordinated Entry Overview. My name is Diane Waite and I am the Coordinated Entry Specialist at the Northeast Ohio VA Healthcare System. I provide support to the catchment area of the Northeast Ohio VA Healthcare System in approximately 19 counties outside of Cuyahoga County, Ohio in my role. A VA Coordinated Entry Specialist is a bridge between the Veterans Health Administration homeless programs and local housing crisis response systems. Next slide, please. The United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, defines a veteran as someone who, regardless of their discharge status, has served on active duty in the armed forces of the United States. This does not include inactive military reserves, nor the National Guard, unless the person was called up to active duty by presidential order. HUD defines literal homelessness as an individual or family who lacks a fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime residence, meaning one has a primary nighttime residence that is a public or private place not meant for human habitation, two is living in a publicly or privately operated shelter designated to provide temporary living arrangements, including congregate shelters, transitional housing, and hotels and motels 
paid for by charitable organizations or by federal, state, and local government programs, or is exiting an institution she or he has resided for 90 days or less and who resided in an emergency shelter or place not meant for human habitation immediately before entering that institution. HUD's definition of a veteran and homeless will be used throughout the presentation today for purposes of continuity. Next slide, please. The website for the National Alliance to End Homelessness reports that since 2011, the number of veterans experiencing homelessness has dropped by 43.3%. But since 2019, the number has increased 0.5%. On a single night in January 2020, 37,252 veterans were experiencing homelessness. 22,048 veterans were sheltered, while 15,204 veterans were unsheltered. Most veterans were without children. Only 2% were homeless as part of a family. 91.3% were men while 8.4%, 3,126 veterans, were women. Next slide, please. Even though the VA has several programs to support veterans at risk for experiencing homelessness, fewer than one in five veterans who were homeless report using such services. With significantly fewer veterans who live in non-urban areas accessing such services, Together, we can identify and serve more veterans in housing crisis through a process called coordinated entry. Next slide, please. Coordinated entry is an approach to coordination and management of a crisis response system's resources that allows users to make consistent decisions from available information to connect people efficiently and effectively to interventions that will rapidly end their homelessness. Next slide, please. Why coordinated entry? I will use the theme of water to describe coordinated entry through a metaphor, a bucket filling with water from a faucet. The water represents households entering the local housing crisis response system. The households that have landed in the bucket are lacking basic necessities, living outdoors, living in a homeless shelter, and so on. HUD outlined four steps to manage the metaphorical water problem through coordinated entry. These steps are access, assessment, prioritization, and referral. Coordinated entry requires that the community advertises to the public how to access the local housing crisis response system. Households experiencing a housing crisis need to know how to find the faucet of the coordinated entry system in order to get help. As close to the faucet as possible, the system is required to assess the household. When the needs and barriers of the household are assessed early in the process, the household can be routed efficiently to the program that will get the job done. The coordinated entry system uses a shared assessment tool so that providers can agree to the process and language of the evaluation of the household for the next step. Prioritization in coordinated entry identifies households with the most barriers and highest need so that these households get routed to the most intensive and most limited services. Households with less barriers or who have more supports available to resolve the housing crisis are assisted with less intensive and less expensive interventions. The referral step in coordinated entry means that the system intentionally chooses what cup is pulling the household out of the bucket based on shared language and eligibility, rather than subjective or arbitrary decisions based on limited information or program-specific motives. The referral process is consistent 
transparent, and accountable to the larger system. Next slide, please. HUD requires that all communities develop and operate a coordinated entry system for all homeless individuals, including the subpopulation of veterans. In 2017, the VA Deputy Undersecretary for Health Operations and Management, Dusham, issued a memo that establishes the roles and responsibilities of the VA in each of their local continuums of care and the continuums of care coordinated entry systems. These are the buckets throughout the state of Ohio. Next slide, please. The VA role in coordinated entry includes facilitating community case conferencing for veteran households in housing crisis, maintaining by name lists of all known veterans experiencing homelessness in each geography, working with local communities to share common assessment tools used in the prioritization process, and share data between the VA and community partner systems. We will now hear from Reaver Nelson, the VA Northeast Ohio Healthcare System Community Resource and Referral Center Manager. Thank you, Diane, and good morning, everyone. My name is Reaver Nelson, and I am the Program Coordinator for the Community Resource and Referral Centers at the VA Northeast Ohio Healthcare System. Currently, there are 32 community resource and referral centers at VA facilities across the country. Community resource and referral centers serve as the entry point for veterans who are experiencing a housing crisis and who are eligible for health care through the Veterans Health Administration. Although we do not have community resource and referral centers at every location, all VAs offer some form of outreach and partner with community agencies to assess the veteran's need and link them with appropriate services. Community resource and referral centers are an essential part of the continuum of homeless services for veterans. The VA Northeast Ohio Healthcare System is responsible for homeless outreach in 21 counties. VA Northeast Ohio Healthcare System was awarded two CRCs that are in Cleveland and Akron, Ohio. CRC conducts outreach services that connect veterans to the identified access points for coordinated entry systems throughout our catchment area. Next slide. Referrals. Community resource and referral centers are alerted through various notification streams that include calls from the veteran's family, neighbors, local authorities, community partners, and others. Veterans present as walk-ins to our facilities, internal referrals, street outreach, or in response to notification from the National Call Center for Homeless Veterans. The National Call Center for Homeless Veterans offers free help for veterans who are homeless or at risk of homelessness and their family members, friends, and supporters who can also make the call or chat online. The National Call Center for Homeless Veterans has trained counselors who are ready to talk confidentially 24 hours a day, seven days a week at 1-877-424-3838. Family members and non-VA providers receive information about available homeless programs and services. They can keep their information confidential or leave contact information so staff can follow up. Assessment. CRCs conduct a comprehensive assessment, and upon completion, the veteran receives information regarding our homeless programs and other VA and community services that are available to respond to the current housing crisis. Veterans who are at risk of homelessness are connected to services intended to stabilize the housing need and divert the veteran from entering homelessness. Next slide. Facilities and services. Though CRCs are similar in daily operations, each has services that have been established based on their site location. The Cleveland and Akron Community Resource and Referral Centers offer offer the following on-site services. Laundry and shower access, bed bug oven, 
veterans' resource room, storage rooms, which house clothing, housewares, hygiene, and other items. Cleveland and Akron hours of operation are from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., Monday through Friday. CRC has an interdisciplinary staff that includes social workers, rehabilitation technicians, vocational, and homeless primary care services. VA has the authority to establish legal partnerships. Our Cleveland and Akron locations have partnered with legal aid programs to hold on-site advice clinics. Other community partners, such as the Veterans Service Commission and the Veterans Benefits Administration, also offer in-person and virtual services for veterans. In closing, the diversity of the CRC staff enables us to provide comprehensive care as we work collaboratively with our veterans to secure housing, employment, and other services to achieve housing stability that improves the veterans' overall quality of life. Thank you all very much, and we will now have a presentation from Ms. Stiebelton on VA Community Partnerships. Oh, sorry. Hi, I'm Sarah Stiebelton. I work with the SSVF program through Lutheran Social Services. Um, I also have helped with our Health Care for Homeless Veteran program and our Grant Per Diem program. Both are veteran-specific programs that are funded through the VA. We work really closely with our VA partners to make sure that any homeless veteran that is presenting to a to any um, medical center in our catchment is connected with one of our homeless programs. So, um, okay. So this is our building um, in Fairhaven. We have quite a few programs that we run out of this small building. We've had this building since 2001. Um, it's got 20, it started off as a 20 unit facility. Uh, it has changed quite a bit over the years and now houses, I want to say nine different programs. Um, but here's a breakdown. We work closely with the Adam board for some of our programs. I'm going to take this off. Um, we work closely with sober living. We also operate two houses that are not on site that are specific to sober living and we just recently switched one of our new houses over to a female facility those are not veteran specific but a veteran could enter into those programs we also run a 24 bed community emergency shelter we've got shelter plus care we have 10 beds that are specific to the health care for homeless veteran program We've got 16 grant per diem beds, which is a long-term program for homeless veterans. We run the SSVF program out of that building, which last year we served 160 households. We've got residential apartments. Uh, we have four buildings all together with 33 previous clients. Um, we say previous because we do have a veteran preference and a homeless preference. So we try to, our, our higher barrier clients, we will put them in one of our units so that we can make sure that they're still maintaining services and getting what they need. And then we also run a social enterprise. Um, that is our Patriot Painting. And we're able to hire on veterans, veterans to that program to help get them employment. Um, it's meant to be kind of a stepping stone and build skills so that they can hopefully move on to a better paying position. And this is some pictures of our vet programs um, and our regular shelter. Each of the rooms in the shelter have bunk beds, but they also have a small kitchen. They have a bathroom, so we try really hard to break it up so that it's more of an efficiency apartment for them than going into what you would picture as being a homeless shelter situation. So moving into our healthcare for homeless veterans, this is a program that we receive funding through our Chillicothe VA. And we currently, we got this grant in 2010. We've currently got 10 emergency shelter beds that will be able to house men and women. 
That is a 90 day program. So basically if a veteran presents to our coordinated entry specialist, they can send them directly to us and we will get them into a bed immediately where we can start getting them services. Um, last year we did only serve 36 veterans in the HCHV program. This is largely due to the push that the SSVF program, which we'll talk about, had with the VA to not put high-risk veterans into a shelter to help combat the COVID epidemic. So we did have lower numbers, but we also want to note that with the lower numbers, we were able to do a lot more with those veterans. Um, we, were we were able to help quite a few of them get their um, service-connected pensions, their non-service connections. We helped get about $10,000 back into the pocket of veterans that entered into the homeless program, which for some of them, it was getting them 100% service connected. Um, some of them, it might have only been 10%, but it was still something more than what they had coming into the program. So that was one of the really nice things about that. Um, while they're in this program, we are providing all of their meals for them. We are providing case management services. They are able to stay in the shelter all day long and meet with case managers. They're able to work with the employment reps. They're able to look for housing. They're basically able to get any service that they might need in one spot. We work really closely with our VA liaison. He is coming in at least once a week. He's normally there three times a week, uh, meeting with the veterans to help make sure that they're getting everything that they need from the VA so that they can become a stable person in the community again in their housing. Um, moving on to the grant per diem program, this is also a veteran specific emergency housing program. This one is just more long term. So this program we have four separate apartments set up at the Fairhaven building and it can house up to 16 veterans and they it's a maximum of a two-year stay but typically they only need six to nine months sometimes it is a little bit longer depending on what they're working on but this is our more long-term program this is specifically for veterans that need more of a clinical model they will be working with um, if they've got mental health if they've got any substance abuse we are working on addressing those issues before we're putting them into housing this program is set up so that they are able to learn basic living skills that they might not have been able to get if they were coming straight from jail or they've been incarcerated for a long time. This is a really great program for them because it does help them transition back into the community. Um, again, last year we did only serve 12 veterans in this program, but it was largely because of COVID and we had such a large push to put veterans into hotels through the SSVF program, which those numbers will reflect <laughs> a lot more with the SSVF part. So, um, and also with this being a long-term program, out of those 12 veterans, seven of them were able to be placed into permanent housing and they have been successful in that housing. So that's a really good thing to note. Now the SSVF program, um, this is this is the program that I work for. So this program, um, we do a lot with this program. They really like to come up with these grand ideas and say, let's let the SSVF program figure it out and lead the way on it. They, <laughs> they're notorious for that. Um, so our program specifically does serve nine counties across the state of Ohio. We are very active in those nine counties. We work closely with the by name lists for the with the whole state um, so we are in more of the rural area so it is a little bit harder for us with our program to get veterans into housing because if you are familiar with the housing crisis right now um, it is very real so this program that's primarily what we're working on so we work with families who are imminently at risk of losing their housing 
or they are literally homeless. So they do not have to be in a shelter program for us to work with them. A lot of times there's veterans that you'll come across that they do not want to go into a homeless shelter. They will not go into a homeless shelter. So the SSVF program becomes a really great option for them because we are able to meet them where they are and we will work with them and try to help them figure out what issues they have going on and how we can help resolve those issues. Uh, our program was initially awarded the grant in 2014. We are a CARF accredited agency through our SSVF program, which is a pretty big deal. Um, we currently have an average of a 36 days to house and our success rate for housing is pretty close to 100%. Um, those are really great numbers that are hard to come across. So this is kind of the number I talked about. So our goal is actually to only serve 115 households a year. Last year, we served 160. This was because of the pandemic. Um, we had a lot of veterans that we had to put into hotels. This became a whole issue. Um, it's very hard to put a veteran in a hotel in the middle of a pandemic and try to figure out getting them out of that hotel and into housing. It was a very large barrier that we were facing, but we, we did it. Um, so just to kind of talk a little bit about the SSVF program more, they, like I said, they like to really come up with these grand ideas and put it on the SSVF program to figure it out. So in 2018, they came up with the rapid resolution idea, which was, it, it is a great idea. Um, basically, it's the SSVF provider's job to screen every veteran as soon as they enter into the homeless systems or reach out to a coordinated entry, and basically, it's the idea that if we can catch them within that first day, day two days, we can help them self-resolve it. We are helping mediate with family members, trying to get them to not enter into the homeless system because it is a very traumatic thing for somebody to enter into a shelter, and we don't want that. So we try really hard to get placement with family. Um, it's the idea that if we can get them out of, home, out of the shelters, out of their situation, and back with family, they will be able to self-resolve. Um, it is a great idea. We don't typically get a whole lot of people that we can do it, but we don't not get people that are eligible for that. Um, in 2019, they came up with the returning home initiative. So working with the homeless population, we find a lot of transient people. Uh, so that means that we get a lot of veterans that have shown up in Ohio from California they, I had one guy that he got on a train basically, he got here and he was stuck. He has no family, he has nobody here that could support him. He was from California. We were able to link him up with his family back in California. We got him on a plane. We got him back to California, linked up with services there, and we got him back where his supports were. So this is a really great idea for the veterans that might be in an area and just don't have anybody here. There's nothing holding them here, and they would do better back in their hometown. Um, in 2020, that was the year of the healthcare navigator. So one of the really great things about the SSVF program is we can work with veterans that might not be eligible for VA medical, which if you are working with veterans, you know not all of them are. So that means that they don't have access to the VA, which can be a huge barrier for some people. The idea of the healthcare navigator is they are linking these veterans up the same way that the VA would provide those wraparound services. We have somebody on staff that will help with the wraparound services also, with getting them linked up for their medical appointments, getting them their dental, getting them whatever they need medically wise, so that we can keep their bodies taken care of so that we can keep them in housing. Um, another thing they just rolled out on us in September was the idea of a shallow subsidy. So SSVF now has the option also of being a two year long program. We are able to 
basically provide rental assistance for two years for veterans that can maybe they're low income and can pay a small portion of their rent, we can help supplement that rent for them in a more long-term setting. Um, we also have this year gotten some really great new funding for the SSVF program that will help us work closer with legal aid. So SSVF has always been able to work with legal aid and now we're going to have the funds to work with actual lawyers, not necessarily doing the um, pro bono services, we can pay for a lawyer to sit down with a veteran now and get their stuff taken care of. This is gonna be a really great resource for a lot of our veterans because a lot of them do have extremely high barriers when it comes to housing. Uh, we'll be able to help get certain things taken care of that we wouldn't have been able to before. This is still brand new. We are in the process of working on getting MOUs set up. Um, I believe there's a call set up for tomorrow with our national office to get a little bit more information. So this is gonna be a really great thing for our veterans. And I think that's all I got. So you guys can always, I think this is in on the site, correct? The, the slide? Yeah. Okay, so um, this is all of our contact information. So if you have any questions, you can always reach out to one of us. So thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, very, very uh, uh, valuable partner. A lot of services that they're providing on behalf of the VA to our, to our veterans. So we thank you for that. Um, I, next up, we have Patricia. P Patricia Efferman. Patricia. Well, hello, let me see, make sure I know how to work this. So I'm Patricia Ufferman. I am a HUDVASH supervisor in the Columbus VA. And okay, oh, here we go. Okay, so the HUDVASH program, it is a partnership between HUD and the VA. So literally homeless veterans, they do need to meet the definition of homelessness that was discussed before, um, would be able to get a housing choice voucher. That is the current term, it used to be called Section 8, a lot of people still call it Section 8. So an eligible veteran would get a voucher to allow them to be housed, but at the same time they get the wraparound clinical services, case management through the hud -Bash program with the VA. So we work very closely, the HUD office and the VA offices work together to assist these veterans. Okay, so hud -Bash is considered the gold standard for housing Homeless veterans, our goal is to end veteran homelessness. That is something we actually do talk about, like ending veteran homelessness. There's, there's a lot of passion um, in the VA and in HUD um, to do this. There is um, 105,000 vouchers nationwide with 80,000 veterans right now currently housed with those vouchers. In Ohio, there are 27, 25, 2,725 vouchers with over 2,000 veterans currently housed. So the, the numbers are, basically we can recycle those, those vouchers. There's new vouchers. So veterans come into the program for different reasons. They graduate, they leave the program. Those vouchers are reused. So some of the, the differences between those numbers that just shows that there's new veterans coming into the program all the time. They're getting housed, there's veterans graduating, there's new vouchers that have come out various years, so the program has grown over the years. Um, in Columbus, we have over 400 vouchers, and we do really maintain most of our vouchers are in use all the time, even if they're not all leased up at once, they're usually all identified to, you know, attached to a veteran. Either they're housed or in the process of being housed somewhere. And with the gold standard, anybody who actually knows me professionally at all, they're going to know that I really, really believe that. Um, I really, like I'm, I'm actually very honored to work in HUDVASH. Um, 
I've grown so much. I've been in Hudvash for almost 10 years now, but I've been a social worker for maybe over 25 years-ish, you know, so for a long time. And I've had other social work positions. I've, this is the program that I have believed in the most. It's been the best position I've ever been in because, and, and there's other really great programs. Some of them, like we've talked about here, there, there's wonderful programs helping veterans, helping people who are not veterans. But the structure of Hudvash is really special um, because we have this just wonderful voucher resource that will meet the, the needs of the veterans financially to actually like get them off the street into permanent housing that needed subsidy and then the clinical services that will also really help deal with those other reasons. It's not just a financial reason that someone's homeless. There's, it's a com there's a lot of complicated reasons that somebody's homeless. So then the VA is able to you you know partner with HUD and really wrap around those um, the services to meet the needs of the veteran. So basic program eligibility, like I said before, they do need to be literally homeless. Um, and that was defined earlier in um, in the program. And they need to need they need to demonstrate a need for case management. So some of the reasons that somebody would need case management, they may have a, a severe um, behavioral health disorder, mental health, medical problems, um, substance abuse disorder. Most often, if they're in Hudvash, it's probably more than one of those things. It's sometimes all three of those things plus you know lack of. Um, support or you know the entire family is very needy and vulnerable in many ways so it is very complicated why somebody would come into homelessness and require the services that we're providing um, and they're assessed for those needs so each veteran like um, in the recorded session that we just heard they talked about coordinated entry when a veteran comes into the shelter or homelessness, if, if they are living not in the shelter but on the land also, if they're coming into the homeless system, they're assessed at that point. We're receiving referrals at that point. But it's not just a one-time assessment. We work very closely with our continuum um, of care regarding the veterans with SSVF partners, you know, with the service commission, um, with shelter staff for an ongoing assessment of the veterans' needs. Because, you know, that first assessment, right, when they enter, that might not be accurate. Maybe the veteran was ashamed or embarrassed and didn't want to, um, you know, disclose some of their needs or, um, you know, different reasons. So as the different providers get to know the veterans better, we're able to really sharpen that assessment and identify the needs and work together. Um, and the veterans for Hudvash are prioritized based on the need um, and length of homelessness. And basically, the longer somebody is homeless, almost always that indicates more needs for the veterans. So, I mean, it should be prioritized based on length of homelessness, and, and it is. Um, so that's how we um, kind of prioritize and work together. In the Hudvash, the Hudvash program is not just about housing. So, like I said, I've been in Hudvash for um, almost 10 years. I started out as a case manager, then I was a team lead for the lease up team. So, we're team based and interdisciplinary. We have, um, in Columbus, we have a lot of social workers. We have some peer support specialists, which um, function very differently than a social worker, but then very similar. Um, they are veterans who have been through homelessness, and our veterans have been through recovery. And they are great mentors for our veterans. They've been through it. They can relate to the veteran in a different way, or the veteran can relate to the peer specialist in a different way. And that builds trust. And we're very... Um, 
we like we're great partners with them and we work together. Um, we have a housing specialist. Um, some HUD VASH programs have like more like nurses. We don't have nurses locally. We have some nurses that we partner with in the facility in a different way. So how the different HUD VASH programs um, decide how they're staffed, it is based on the local needs within the facility and the structure of the facility and what services they have. Like we have um, HPACT in Columbus, so we have a, a, an RN that we partner with that um, stands, I know we have all those acronyms, that's the Homeless Primary Care Team. Um, so then they work with a lot of our veterans, for example. Um, and when I say it's not just about housing, the first thing that we do is provide them a voucher, look at the goals, and try to get them try to get them housed as soon as possible. We will take them on housing searches, work closely with veterans. We help them get other resources, such as um, utility assistance. We do not like in Columbus, and I bet a lot of HUD bashes are like this in Ohio. We don't consider someone housed on our team until they have utility assistance because they're not going to stay housed in, in, in most cases unless they also have that because they're not going to be able to afford the utilities once they're housed if they don't have the income. So um, on our lease up team, many of those veterans are their, um, most of them are going to be transferred to the other teams for ongoing services, but we're going to wait until we have everything lined up. They're going to have furniture. They're going to um, have their utilities. They're going to be, um, be housed, certainly, and have an initial treatment plan done. Um, and that has been very effective for us and our veterans. Um, then they go on to work on other goals. So HUDVASH is considered a clinical treatment for homelessness. So we have you know, independent providers on our team. They're providing clinical services where um, you know, we're trained in, um, like our, veteran, our, our social workers, they may be experts in recovery services, um, um, the aging population. We really, one of the things, because when I first started, we weren't doing team-based model of care in Hudvash. I will say that I've been around long enough where I've seen that grow. We have a lot of talent and areas of expertise amongst our team. So we will work together, they will work together, but um, where we have an expert in this area and an expert in that area, and sometimes the veterans are assigned based on the expertise of that social worker, or if that need hadn't been already identified, we will, you know, they will collaborate in huddles and team meetings to meet the, the care of the veteran. Because the veterans who are in HUDVASH, they have a lot of different reasons that they became homeless in the first place. I mean, we have a lot of veterans who are aging and they have, um, you know, some of them are, are developing dementia, cognitive disorders. They may not meet level of care. They may have a lot of obstacles such as legal obstacles. Like we have veterans who really would benefit from perhaps um, a higher level of care nursing home, but then they have a hard time maintaining in a nursing home because of their behavior and then they get kicked out of the nursing home and then they're in, you know, so there's, it's, it's pretty complicated. But then we have a lot of young veterans too that have PSD, PTSD, oh, um, another acronym, but the OAF, OIF veterans, those who are just recently served in combat, they're also in our program. Their needs are going to look very different than the aging population. So, um, we're going to vary what we're doing depending on what their goals are, what their needs are, um, and it honestly is amazing. Um, we don't have time to like show videos or have veterans talk here, but um, I will just tell you that homelessness is such a crisis such a traumatic crisis. Like Sarah was talking, when they go into shelter, she just, um, she said something about that is very traumatic. So 
we're meeting the veterans when they're at the lowest point in their lives. Maybe it was lower if they were incarcerated. That's probably a little bit low. I mean, that is lower. Often they are just recently incarcerated, but it is one of the lowest, if not the lowest point in their lives. And to be able to, and, and that's a basic need where you need to have housing to do other things. So that's why one of the other words that we, you know, we use, we say we're housing first. And we are housing first. We're meeting the veteran where they are. We're not expecting them to get sober, get a job, do this, do that before they get housing. We come in and we help them get housed. Um, most of the time they are housed. And, but they're the ones, they're doing work. The veteran themselves are also doing work in this process. And it has been amazing to see the changes in people's lives. Like it is truly, um, life-changing for veterans. Um, I've seen people who have gone to college. I mean, we have, one of our peers was a Hudvash veteran, I guess, before I was there. But I mean, it's, I can't even imagine where he claimed, you know, where he tells me he came from, both of them, where they were at one time. So we've been able to see um, veterans go to college, you know, just do amazing things. Um, so, it's long lasting. So they get to stay in the program as long as they need to stay in the program. Sometimes somebody has a severe mental illness, they're going to be in our program for a very long time and that is okay. And then we're going to meet them where they are, work with them on their goals. And then um, as long as their income is lower than um, what, is, what is allowed. And basically earlier, they talked about the poverty levels. For HUD VASH, it's the same as HUD. Generally, we're supposed to be under the 30% poverty level, which is about 17,000 for a single person. But we can go up with HUD VASH, has a little bit special rules compared to other vouchers. They can be a little bit up above that. They can never be above the 50th percentile for the poverty level according to HUD. But we are allowed a little bit of special rules um, so they can stay in the program. A lot of our veterans graduate. They become over income or they need a higher level of care. They do want to go into nursing homes or assisted living. And we recycle those veterans and another veteran gets housed with that voucher. Um, so that is how we're able to, you know, maintain and admit new veterans every month, really. Um, and then veterans are met with, um, depending on their acuity, some veterans are met with every week, more than once a week, if they have very intensive needs. Some veterans are met with only monthly or a couple times a month, but then there are some veterans who are only met with um, quarterly. Now, those are the veterans who are preparing to graduate out of case management, and they can. If they're under the income level, they can stay in the voucher program without case management if they don't need the case management, and then come back in any time they want. But it's just very, you know, it's just very, um, you know, very different depending on the veteran's needs, what services they're getting. Um, but, you know, it is very exciting to be able to, to see the changes. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you. Yeah, we, we could have spent the whole afternoon talking just about HUD VASH, so it's a, a very valuable program. Okay, next we have Diane. Okay, is everyone feeling that wonderful lasagna right about now? It was awesome, so thank you. Um, before I be, uh, begin with my presentation, I just want to quickly say thank you to Justice uh, Kennedy, uh, to Justice Stratton, and everyone here for your service to our veterans. And if any of you are veterans, thank you for your service. Uh, Justice Stratton, I do want to say that I am so happy to meet you. I have one of my staff who absolutely uh, raves about you and adores you, William Page Layman. And uh, he talks all the time about how supportive you are of our veterans. And so thank you uh, so much and everything. Okay. All righty. Um, you know, here's what I want to say, because we've talked a lot, a lot today about homelessness. And that word in itself has, uh, a, a, can be negative. Um, you know, it sometimes does not show the brighter side of things. And what I want us to leave here today 
is remembering this, is that guess what, you guys? As much as we talked about it, all these great resources, the beauty about what we've talked about and what we're doing, it is paying off. Homelessness amongst veterans, the numbers have gone down. So please do not get discouraged and weary in what we're doing and everything. Uh, keep up the good work because it is working. The other thing I want to say is that uh, thanks to all of our community partners. Sarah, I love those crazy things that they put on you guys because we could never do and house the number of veterans that we have housed, at least I know in our Dayton catchment area without our SSVF partners, and they are absolutely wonderful. So I hope they keep getting crazy and coming up with uh, ideas to put on you guys, okay? All righty, thank you. Now, I'm not the uh, savvy tech person, uh, so Jim. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Okay, ending veteran, uh, homelessness. Uh, success in ending homelessness among veterans is happening community by community, and measuring that success is now easier. New guidelines, which are benchmarks for us uh, to meet, have been released by the United States Interagency Council on Homelessness. Help communities benchmark their progress towards ensuring that every veteran has a place to call home. And some of those benchmarks are identifying all veterans experiencing homelessness. And the way that we do that when we talk about coordinated entry is that uh, this is where our continuum of care partners come in at. And for Dayton area, and I'm personalizing this to, um, uh, to Dayton, that would be our Dayton, Kettering, uh, Montgomery County continuum of care. Uh, for our veterans that are in those rural areas, we work very closely with Ohio Balance of State. And then our catchment area just goes r just over the uh, Indiana line to Richmond, Indiana. So we also work with the Indi uh, Indiana uh, Balance of State. But identifying those veterans very early on, meeting in our monthly continuum of care meetings, uh, developing those by name list of veterans that identify every veteran that is uh, homeless, either staying at the shelters um, or they're in our uh, per diem transitional housing programs or in our emergency housing program. And then developing a housing plan for every veteran and working with that veteran and referring them to those services that are going to help us move them from homelessness to permanent housing. Okay. Capacity to provide immediate shelter to unsheltered veterans. That is crucial to move people out of street, street homelessness. Let's say that they are living in tent cities, on benches, um, abandoned buildings. Uh, we identify those veterans. Dayton VA has two emergency housing programs. One is our grant and per diem transitional housing programs. We have 30 beds allocated. 15 of those beds are what we call service intensive beds. Those are beds for our veterans who uh, are homeless, but maybe as of yet don't have a really concrete plan as to what, uh, uh, how they're going to move forward in um, uh, permanent housing. And then our role becomes, to, again, to work with them to develop that plan. The other 15 beds are what we call bridge beds. Those are uh, veterans who are homeless, and let's say they have been uh, awarded a HUD uh, a voucher, and they're waiting um, for their housing. Then we would work with those uh, veterans, of course, coordinating with our HUD VASH program to help, again, move those veterans to permanent housing. And if um, I think that. Um, uh, Patricia talked about that is that the beauty about our homeless programs is that we operate on a housing first model. Uh, whatever comorbidities a veteran may have going on, substance, PTSD, uh, uh, you know, if there's trauma, uh, um, unemployment, whatever's going on, unless, they're, uh, if, unless they are uh, clinically unstable, uh, then what we would do is, of course, get them linked to those uh, needed services once they're stabilized and they return to us and we move forward in the housing plans. But what's, whatever's going on with that veteran, then guess what? We can continue to move forward with their housing plan and work together with those uh, different agencies and resource providers. Uh, dedication to the housing first model, I just talked about that, limited service intensive uh, transitional and rapid permanent housing uh, placement. Uh, the goal is to quickly move veterans out of homelessness, stabilize, 
and within 90 days try to have them in permanent housing. And uh, I can say that uh, in Dayton we've done a really good job of that uh, this year. And, uh, and then con to continue on with whatever needed services uh, they may need to sustain that housing. System capacity for sustainment. You know, um, it's not just enough to help veterans get housed. Uh, there are resources that have got to be put in place to help sustain that housing so that we don't have a return to homelessness. And this is where we continue to work if needed with our SSVF agencies. Let's say that we have veterans that may experience some delinquency in their rental pay, uh, payments, utility payments, maybe there's a loss of income. Um, uh, or a medical emergency, and so we want to continue to provide those uh, wraparound services that are going to allow them to uh, stay in that housing. Okay. okay. Ending veteran homelessness. VA is committed to ending veteran homelessness community by community. Our work in collaboration with large and small localities proves that through their leadership, cooperation, and evidence-based practices, it's possible to ensure that every, every veteran has a home. Uh, thus far, uh, three states and 82 communities have uh, uh, what we call ended, effectively ended veteran uh, homelessness. And um, in Ohio, uh, Dade Montgomery County, Akron, um, Barberton, Summit County. And I'm proud to say that, uh, I'll toot our own horn here a little bit, Gina's smiling over there, uh, that Dayton was the first uh, uh, VA city in the state of Ohio to end veteran homelessness in 2016. So we are very, very proud of that. Very proud of that. And ending veterans uh, homelessness came out of a call to action by our first lady then, Michelle Obama, in, t in June of 2014, uh, where uh, there was a call to action to all mayors around the nation to work very closely with the U.S. Interagency Council on Homelessness, uh, local community partners, uh, the uh, League of uh, Cities and Mayors, to work together, develop a collaborative and comprehensive unified plan to address veteran homelessness and work to meet a, uh, a metric that would say that we have effectively ended veteran homelessness. Now, when a lot of people hear that, the first thing they think is that, um, so if Dayton ended uh, veteran homelessness, does that mean there are no more homeless veterans in Dayton? Of course not. That's uh, not what that mean means. Basically, what it means is that we have come together as a community and develop a uh, unified collaborative um, uh, system, uh, system that allows us, number one, to rapidly respond to the needs of homeless veterans, to come together to develop a plan of action to rapidly get those veterans out of, if it's street homelessness, as I said, um, and to sheltered uh, emergency housing, and then to quickly move them forward to permanent housing. Okay. And also to hope that in the future, episodes of homelessness for veterans is rare. Um, and when it does occur again, that we uh, rapidly and quickly uh, move towards uh, getting those veterans rehoused. All right. And I talked a little bit about that already, about the call to action from our mayor. And I just want to read a, a quick statement about what the mayor said, uh, some of our community partners said in terms of, of responding to that call to action. In the summer of 2015, our, the, our mayor, uh, Nan Whaley, said, I proudly pledge my commitment to the mayor's challenge to end veteran homelessness. Together, the city of Dayton, Montgomery County, and our, and our uh, community partners have uh, worked to ensure that every veteran has access to permanent housing. Targeted collaboration among our partners has streamlined a community process that ensures that any veteran in Dayton and the Dayton community who needs assistance receives a rapid connection to housing resources. And then Montgomery County and the Dayton region remains committed to protecting the men and women who bravely protected our freedoms. Added Montgomery County President Judy Dodge, we will continue to work with our partners to ensure our veterans have access to safe, stable housing. I have often said, and I say this all the time to our community partners, um, years, uh, 
years ago, I used to say many moons ago, but then I didn't want to tell my age. So now I just say a, a se uh, several years ago, I was a, uh, did my student internship at the Dayton VA. And, um, you know, back then, um, the World War II veterans were our pretty much our uh, main population. And um, VA kind of operated as a city, this big bureaucracy, a city uh, by itself. It is so wonderful today coming back as an employee to see how Dayton uh, VA and other VAs around the nation are now uh, collaborating with our communities. You know, yes, we may be the federal government, you all, we may have some money, we may have, a, uh, you know, resources, but we cannot do what we do for our veterans alone. And we've come to understand that. And that's why uh, when we talk about ending veterans homelessness, the one thing that I will say to you uh, as a takeaway is what is key is developing those collaborative relationships and those coalitions with the community, those state, uh, county uh, agencies to work together with VA so that we serve those veterans who have served our nations. Okay, uh, that is very, very important. And that is how you end veteran homelessness in your community. Um, and then the last thing I wanna just touch bases on uh, about challenges and barriers to sustaining that. Um, number one, what do you think number one is everyone? What's the hot word for the last year, maybe year and a half now? Say it, come on, say it loud. COVID. COVID-19, are we ever gonna stop saying that we're COVID-19? That's probably uh, number one in terms of, uh, is to ensure that we know that veterans that are homelessness, I think I uh, read a statistic somewhere that they are three times likely to be uh, exposed to and impacted by uh, COVID. And so again, the, uh, uh, if we can quickly move them from uh, shelter to emergency housing and then to permanent housing, the less chances for exposure uh, as well as uh, contracting COVID. Um, housing stock, big issue, okay? For anyone who's trying to buy a home these days, you don't have to be a homeless veteran. If anyone's trying to buy a, a home uh, these days and dealt with the housing market, we know that around the nation, housing is, is, is there's a shortage there. So imagine if you are a homeless veteran and, and, and you're out doing housing search and you're trying to find affordable housing. Uh, that's a big issue now. So trying to work very closely with our private landlords uh, to increase those numbers through having uh, landlord fares and identifying uh, different, cor uh, di uh, different corporations that will come on board with us to uh, provide housing for our veterans, really important. Um, and then there has been since uh, 2001, a steady increase in, in rental rates. And we know that uh, many of our veterans are on uh, fixed incomes. And so uh, again, going back to uh, those community resources that we have like SSVF, Veterans Matters, our veteran service organizations that help us financially with those veterans to help uh, sustain their housing. And then, um, the need for, uh, we've talked about this, and I know they're gonna talk more about that in the next uh, session, but the need for our veterans to have a livable, sustainable uh, income, okay? I heard someone say earlier that, you know, um, uh, I think that's right, housing is, is not a privilege, you all, that's a right. And it is not okay for our veterans, uh, for people to go off and, you know, and say that they will give their life for this country and then to have nowhere to come home to literally. And so um, that is not a privilege, that is a right uh, that we need uh, for our veterans. And then last of all is to um, is just continue to identify again afford affordable permanent housing uh, resources for them and to continue to work with the community on sustaining our efforts. Um, and I think that um, that is it for me. So are there any questions? Yeah. Or Jim, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Diane. Uh, 
One of the things I hope you pick up from our panel today is their passion. Uh, it takes a lot of passion with the folks that work in our homeless programs, and I really appreciate all the work that they're doing. And COVID absolutely uh, created a, a, a huge number of challenges for you all, so thank you. Um, we are over our time, uh, but um, I just wanted to let, alert you to this uh, slides. We have some additional information that's available. Uh, this talks about uh, the VA's uh, strategic plan uh, for homelessness, ending homelessness uh, for 2021 through 2025. I started my role in 2010 when then Secretary Shinseki announced that we will end veteran homelessness in five years. Ten years, you know, five years after that, uh, we're still working on it. So the work continues and uh, we have a lot of resources out there, but a lot of uh, challenges with working through um, coordination. Um, but this has an outline of, uh, of the strategic plan here. And, uh, and then this sort of just lists the uh, objectives, uh, the six objectives that we have. So I'm not going to take time going through this. This information is available to you. Additionally, uh, we have um, some resources that I've uh, post made available to you here. Uh, some information, some links to our, our VA resource or VA sites, websites, as well as some videos, uh, some testimonials. The videos you heard this morning were powerful. Some of these videos uh, are, are very well done and um, these are on our national uh, website. So please uh, check those out if you have some time. Um, I know we're transitioning to a break and then we go to the employment session. Um, I'll be coming up after that, and so we'll try to work in. If you have questions, we'll try to address those questions, and I'll stick around during the break if that's okay for me to address questions. Are you guys able to do that as well? Okay, so let me just throw it out. If you need to take a break, please do, uh, but let me just throw it out to see if anybody has any questions. Yes? Yeah, so specific to homeless women veterans? Well, you have certainly there are, are uh, when you're talking about some of the resources that were out there traditionally, oh yes, I forgot. I <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, we talked about needing the mic for the audience so everybody could hear. Um, uh, with, with homeless women veterans, some of the programs are geared towards male veterans, but we have done a lot of work to ensure that homeless women veterans have access to services they need. And the two primary programs that we have to help with permanent housing, HUD-VASH and SSVF, those help, help any veteran. So it doesn't matter if you're a male, female, transgender, if you're homeless and you're in need of those services, we are going to try to help you get connected to those services. Uh, the SSVF resources that were provided during COVID to help hotel, what we call hotel, veterans. That was in an effort to decompress these uh, shelter environments and place veterans in hotels so they could have social uh, distancing, uh, you know, reduce uh, infection control measures, that sort of thing. Same thing. We'll place a veteran, a veteran family uh, into hotels. Uh, some of our uh, transitional housing emergency shelter beds are geared towards single adults. So a, a veteran with a dependent may not have the same access to those uh, shelter beds or transitional housing beds. So using the flexibility that we have with our SSVF program, working to get those veterans permanently housed as quickly as we can, and using other resources that are available to uh, veterans in the community, those are the ways that we're going to try and help support all veterans. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Okay, well, I really do want to thank uh, the panel and just to, again to emphasize that, you know, I had this set up with talking about the coordinated entry system, uh, uh, coordinated entry at the beginning and then ending with a community that ended homelessness. The main point, the main message here is all about coordination. The services that we have are great, the resources that we have are great, but if we don't work together to coordinate, if we're not doing our part to help identify veterans that are in our communities, if, ESSA, if Lutheran Social Services knows they have a veteran, but the VA doesn't know about it, we're not able to make best use of all of our resources available. So that's, that's what we're trying to do to, to coordinate our, our systems. 
Um, and I appreciate the, the time that you took today. So thank you.